Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Equiculture Speaks. I'm Heidi. Pam is here, and we have Glenn hey. Batten with us. Equiculture's mission Hi. is to unite horses, humans, and Mother Earth. So, Glenn, can you tell us about yourself? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for the third time, uh, I am human. I'm not a robot. Yeah, I'm a human, not a robot. Um, <laughs> in my life, I've uh, spent a lot of time outdoors and learning many different things. I have, uh, I raised a family. I've been divorced for since 2000 or something like that. And, uh, I have kids. I have grandkids. And um, I accidentally ecology and sociology and um, speech communications, but for some reason, I don't know why, but a lot of people, like 50 people, have come to me, even in the past couple of weeks, I've had some uh, that were suicidal and they just wanted to talk to me before that thing. And so I know that people feel safe around me and uh, I have some skills, but you know when uh, I, I can, I encourage them to go see a professional because I'm not that way. But uh, I'm grateful that I was gifted a Lakota name while I was out on the Pine Ridge Reservation, and they Davis Ghost gave me the name Chante Washte Wichasha, which means good-hearted man. And I, I didn't receive it at first, but one day I was at Blue Star and a stranger dude and I were talking for 10 or 15 minutes and he used that funny combination of words, good hearted man. And I thought, okay, there's one. And over the next couple of weeks, like three strange men that I didn't even know after talking for a few minutes, they came out with that sentence. So that, I own it now. So uh, I'm, I'm proud that others can see that. And uh, in my life, um, in all of the different sales things that I have done, I got to meet an elderly gentleman uh, who had a vision of the soil at the Garden of Eden. And he recreated a formula that mimics the soil at the Garden of Eden. And I worked with him selling some of his things in the late 80s. And then before he passed in the late 90s, he taught me his formula about six months before that and gave me all those connections and things. And so that's been my mission. And the name of the, the company is Mother Earth Organics. And we make products that heal soil and water and make everything grow to its maximum prime potential. And by that, I mean, you know, we've all seen like National Geographic and we've seen some kids in the third world and they're just skin and bones and barely hanging on alive. And we're really big here in the West. And it really comes down to diet and the environment. And if you give a plant or a child everything it could possibly need nutritionally, then the DNA of the plant or the person is going to become its maximum self. There's nothing holding it back. And so I teach about soil. And uh, I probably do that better than running a business uh, healing soil. But uh, I've had um, others around me and I have people flocking to me these days, uh, helping me. Um, but I teach about the seven keys to soil health. If I'm talking to golf course people, superintendents, my speech is titled, How to Get Your Golf Course Off of Drugs. And every head in the room snaps around and they're paying attention. And I tell them the average life expectancy of a golf course superintendent is only 58. And for some reason, they typically spray these bad poisons on ladies day, which is a Monday. And then the ladies walk through that. And a lot of ladies have health problems. But um, I teach, uh, how to uh, restore and heal soil and give it everything it needs. And um, I, I 
been wrestling with the different governments about that. Uh, the state of Oregon, uh, after five or six years, they banned my product because of the word compost on my label. It says feedback liquid compost. And they insist that somebody had to be there with a thermometer measuring the temperature of the compost pile and turning that compost pile every few weeks or something like that. And uh, in Oregon, at least, uh, those are, that's the criteria for saying there's compost. Well, my compost is from the great flood of the earth. In the Noah and the Ark days, after all the water disappeared and everything started drying out, all of the plants and trees turned into four things. It turned into oil, it turned it into coal, it turned under into diamonds, and it turned into compost. And the big difference is that the composted one had access to air. It was aerobic environment. The others were in an anaerobic environment. And there may have been more heat and pressure and things like that. So this compost is as old as whenever that was. Was it millions of years ago? Some people debate that it's 30 or 6,000 years ago, but we all agree pretty much that uh, there was a great flood. And there is uh, about 12 deposits of this special compost on earth. Uh, scientists call it Leonardite. Uh, most farmers and growers call it humate. And it has profound properties, which makes my, my one of the things that makes my property unique. Um, one, one of its properties is the abil ability to hold nutrients. All of the nutrients that a plant eats are have a positive electrical charge on them. Like on the periodic table of the elements, every one of those symbols has a plus or a minus. The plus ones are the positive anions. The one, the elements with a negative symbol are um, their uh, anions. So it's, uh, um, so if you made the best soup of positive elements and poured it on the beach, uh, even the best cation soup would go right to China because the water will just go through the sand. Or if you have, you know, where I live in Oregon, it's volcanic soil and there's almost no organic matter in the soil. And on every soil test, there's a measurement. And it says C period, E period, C period, cation exchange capacity. And in English, that means can the soil hold cations? Those are the positive elements. So uh, the dirt, uh, uh, the sand at the beach has uh, the ability of zero to hold on to those cations. Where I live, the soil has the ability of like a four milli equivalents if it was only hydrogen or six milli equivalents of hydrogen. But this ancient compost, this humate, has a cation exchange capacity of 600 milli equivalents if it was just holding hydrogen which is half of what water is in, actually uh, two thirds of what water is. And so um, I speak to uh, uh, gardening clubs, I've talked to farmers, I talk to golf courses, I talk to stores that sell those kind of products. And um, most farmers don't know about how to grow more topsoil. For example, in the bread basket of America, in Nebraska, for example, there's only about two and a half inches of topsoil left. Whereas uh, Pam and I have another friend, Stephen Storch, that grows an inch a year. And in nature, it takes a million years to grow one inch of topsoil. And Stephen grows five inches every five years. And uh, he, one of his tricks is that he feeds the soil all year round, twice a month, he'll feed the soil. <clears throat> and uh, the microbes do their thing, eating up the dead leaves and pine needles and uh, microbes breaking down, you know, dead pieces of wood and stuff like that. And that turns into uh, compost. And so uh, <clears throat> that that's the key. Um, 
that we, your soil uh, could, needs to be enhanced so it can hold that. Um, and so the microbes live a few seconds to a few minutes and they die and their dead bodies stack up and they've already done their work. And that's uh, where that uh, living soil comes from. <clears throat> so um, my product does, it's not a fertilizer. It's more like vitamins. And it's not on the label, but uh, there's a lot of different enzymes in there. And there's cytokinins and auxins and gibberellins. We just say it's from fermented sugar cane. Um, and because it will cost me about 20 grand per enzyme to list them and prove it scientifically. So I just left that E word enzyme off the label. But one of the most profound things that feedback liquid compost does is that it will go deeply into your soil. Um, if you, your soil is really compacted and tight and it rains or snows, you have mud puddles when it melts. And, and it's not draining anywhere. The, the ground doesn't have, uh, it's not opened up enough. And feedback uh, will take care of that in a very short time period, like hours. Uh, or out west here where they, they dig big deep holes to grow cannabis with. Um, it takes a crew a long time. It's like rock hard soil, but my stuff will go through that in like an hour and make it soft again, as deep as you water it in. So that's one of the 40 features that it brings to the table. It will decompact soil. It also uh, has another property, uh, is how the plants suck up nutrients from their roots. That slurping up pressure in science is called Tugor pressure, T-U-G-O-R pressure. And if the plant was like sitting in uh, a milkshake and trying to suck that up, it's not going to get as much. It's just like when we drink a milkshake through a straw, it takes a lot more pressure than just a sip of water. Well, feedback thins out water even more, maybe 10 times or more. Uh, and But now the uh, what that liquid that the plant's sucking up is laced with 77 vitamins. 77 elements and all of these root growth hormones and uh, other things that bring health benefits to the plant. Um, and that's how it becomes a maximum prime plant. You've just given that plant everything it needs. Uh, what I tell uh, all farmers and growers, don't just water the plant, just like where you put fertilizer down for your plant. Do the whole field, even the space between the plants and the space between the rows the whole field. And I say, you know, it's like if you got a, a block of cheese at the store and you cut it in half and it's all milk inside because it hasn't converted to cheese yet. That's what you're doing if you just water the plant instead of the whole field. So it makes the whole field down and wide um, uh, very easy for the roots to get to. And when you have super long roots, horizontal and vertical roots, the plant has more sources of water to get to, and it's laced with vitamins and other goodies uh, everywhere it goes. And so my top cannabis growers in Oregon tell me that they get 30 to 50% more flowers. Um, top golf courses, and I won't uh, mention the famous person that used to be president that uh, has golf courses, but he was a customer. And um, some of the richest families in America used it on their estates. Um, and so people, I get calls from farmers from time to time. They're trying to stay, set the state record for how many bushels of wheat they can grow in Iowa or wherever they are. And that's prompted some people to use my, my the products also. So um, that's, that's my flagship product is Feedback Liquid Compost. And um, I have that in a liquid form and I have in the dry granule uh, uh, ancient compost form. And I have, uh, when I inherited the formulas, 
my predecessor that taught me that, Ed Wilman, was um, just selling like 55-gallon drums in five-gallon buckets. And it occurred to me the most popular hobby in the entire United States is gardening. And how many people have even just a couple of house plants, if not a lot of house plants? And I realized they're not going to buy a 55-gallon drum of this stuff. So I put it in consumer bottles, Pines Quartz gallons, and sample bottles of like four ounces. And uh, I usually give those samples out when I speak to a gardening club or at a trade show or something. And when you use the product, one shot glass worth, just a, a, an ounce of that liquid compost in a gallon of water, uh, and you're ready to go. That's what you would water your plants with. So a lot of people might use an old jar or something, fill it with water and, and do their house plants. Or some people have so many plants, they attach a thing to their end of their hose and spray it out. You can do it that way. Um, you know, there's a there's many different reasons why they would use it. A golf course, twice a year at least, uh, uh, they punch holes in the soil, and the holes are, you know, half an inch to an inch apart, and they're trying to aerate the soil and open it up because the healthy microbes that we want growing in in the soil all breathe there. and their soil at the golf course gets really compacted from people and golf courts growing on it. And so twice a year, they have a tractor with this other hole punching thing behind it, and they're paying for fuel, and they're paying for someone to drive this tractor, and everybody has to stop playing as they push through. And it, it just takes the, the golf course uh, out of business for two to four days a year. Uh, and it leaves little clods of dirt everywhere. So I tell them, Put this through your sprinkler system at night and it will soak deeply into the soil and open up the soil so you can have a healthy environment for microbes. And we need a great diversity of microbes. We need a great diversity of minerals. We need a great diversity of enzymes. We need air and water and we need compost to hold that uh, so it doesn't run away. And after you do those six things, the seventh thing is don't mess with it. If you get two or three weeds, don't pull out the poison. You know, don't, don't get radical. Maybe we just pull that weed or maybe uh, we balance the soil. Weeds are telling you something. Dandelions are telling you there's not enough calcium in the soil. And they put down this big, deep tap root to bring up calcium. But if you put calcium where you see dandelions, they'll disappear. Same as clover. They're fixing nitrogen in the soil. But if you put nitrogen there they don't have, have a job to do and so uh they'll move on somewhere else those are the kind of things uh, that i teach um uh it was those seven keys of soil health air and water and minerals and enzymes and microbiology compost and then don't mess with it Another de don't mess with the thing is if, if you just did all this organic stuff to your lawn, you're not going to throw a party and tell everybody to park there at night because it's going to compact the dirt again. So that don't mess with it. Once it's perfect, don't mess with it. There's, there's some other way to deal with things naturally. And if we all uh, gardened and farmed um, organically and with natural things, uh, we wouldn't have some of the health problems that many people in America have with MS and cancer and those kinds of things. Uh, while we're here, I key, I've mentioned that, those two words a couple of times, natural and organic. Rocks are completely natural, but there's no organic matter in rocks. Um, organic... Um, uh, means that there is carbon in it, you know, and it also has carbon. But like granite, it isn't. It, it's all natural, um, but it. it uh, so that's. Uh, I I got that lesson here in uh, Oregon. They had, had uh, refused to publish. You know, let me sell it initially. They held me up for about a year or two, 
they were niggling about little things. But on my label, I had made a mistake. I said 100% natural and 100% organic. And I said, it can't be 100% or both. What? So I just said 100% natural and organic. And we'll leave it that way. But the message I'm trying to put out is there's no poison in here. There's nothing that's going to hurt people. It's non-toxic. Or pets or children um, or any or the water. It's not going to hurt anything. Right, right. It won't hurt anything. So um, I work with that. And I also work with a blend of uh, microbes that uh, a lot of people are familiar with compost tea that Dr. Elaine Ingham had made very popular in the last 20 years, talking about uh, if you uh, was encouraging people to take your best compost and put it in some pantyhose and hang it in a trash can full of water and stir it around for a couple of days, but use it up on the third day, uh, that water, now it's like brownish and it has it's full of microbes and putting that all over whatever you're growing, your garden, your your house plants, your lawn, your farm, you won't use those poisons that Monsanto sells. They sell those poisons for weeds, insects, and disease. And it's the, uh, the disease one that a golf course, oh my gosh, there's a strip of white stuff going across there. <laughs> we can't have that. It has to look picture perfect. And they sell their soul out to use the poison that kills them just to accomplish that. So by putting my stuff on where the, the greens and teas are cut every day to a 32nd of an inch, it's like putting on first aid cream or vaccine or something like that. And uh, it's been very successful. Um, East Hampton Golf Course uh, uses it pretty much on everything that they do. Uh, um, and uh, I accept that they don't measure it exactly how I'd like them to measure it. They have a big tank in. He feels good coming from the heart and just putting a couple of glugs from the, from his five gallon jug into his you know a hundred gallon tank of water, and that feels good to him. A couple of jug, glugs will do it. Um, people use it all different ways. If you have really toxic soil, um, you may want to use four ounces uh, per gallon, but I wouldn't uh, go more than that because the carbon is so dense that the microbes will spend all their time breaking that carbon down and not doing the other jobs that they do in the soil, like going after uh, uh, bad microbes, like uh, uh, there's root feeding worms called nematodes. That's the biggest problem that, that uh, the EPA scientists told me that they have in, um, in Brazil where they're growing a lot of cotton. He told me uh, they're going to wipe out the whole Amazon in 50 years if we don't stop this. I said, what's your biggest problem? And he said, nematodes. I said, have you heard of trichoderma? And he said, no, what's that? This is the head scientist. And uh, he said, uh, I, he didn't know what it was. And I said, it's a root. It goes after those root feeding nematodes. When it smells or senses the presence of those root feeders, trichoderma will put out a lasso and exude pheromones through that to attract it in. And the lasso tightens down, kills that, that nematode, and it sucks the juice out of it and poops it out near, as fertilizer back at the plant's roots. Um, it does that. Uh, the air we breathe is mostly fertilizer, actually. It's 83% nitrogen. All air on Earth, and some is maybe slightly higher than that, but 83 to 85% nitrogen. Well, there's two microbes, Azotobacter and Arthrobacter, that breathe in nitrogen right at the plant's roots or on the leaves if you use it as a foliar. Most people think, ooh, uh, microbes, uh, bacteria, they give you cooties. The truth is about 90. Two, three, or three percent of all the microbes in the world are harmless to you, but there are ones that do some really good jobs. Um, penicillin, for example, it's a wonderful uh, product that they've made, but it it's made from bread mold. Uh, um, those bacillus strains, and so uh, my instant compost tea is not like everybody else's that just uses compost. I have you know, roughly a dozen very specific microbes that go into 
the blends to inoculate your soil. And I tell everybody, don't just inoculate around the plant, do your whole field. So the whole field is living and breathing and it's got all the good things. And if you are very healthy, then uh, if the soil is very healthy, then it's not going to get disease. That's what's up with that. Um, any other questions? I really loved uh, when we talked recently about golf courses and the amount of chemicals they actually have to use and how honestly they are one of the biggest polluters in any community along with the playing fields and things like that and how really important it is to educate them about you know their role in in um, poisoning our communities and they know they already yeah. know and i think they probably do have pressure on them to get this right you know and uh and how quick and easy your formulas really are i mean i've grown everything i grow i've grown for all the years I've been growing now, I've grown it everywhere with your stuff, just your stuff and the manure of the horses. And I've had beautiful Perfect. gardens, perfectly healthy, never get the diseases or any of the things that are going on. Even they have a lot of drought resistance and um, just really healthy, vibrant plants and colors and taste much better. But like I said, with yeah. the golf courses, I'd really like for you to talk for another minute about the golf courses and the kind of impact they have and what, what's the, pro the practice they have on their, on their courses that make it so bad for the environment. So there's 18,000 golf courses in America. Yeah. And they all spend about $100,000 a year, mostly on poison. So it will look picture perfect. They use poison fertilizer instead of organic fertilizer, most of them, almost everyone. And then they wonder why they have these other problems. Um, part of it is the poisons, and those poisons thrive in the pH that they like to grow in. FYI, neutral pH is 7.4. So anything south of that is slightly acidic. Most weeds, insects, and disease happen below pH 6 in plants and in humans. So it's good to, your liver's job is to regulate your blood so every day it returns to 7.4. And so it's acidic if it's that. Um, and uh, uh, I'm having a senior moment. And if it's over 7.4, it's alkaline. That's what they yeah. call it. Yeah. So like uh, humic acid I make from that uh, ancient zillion year old compost. And if you pour a high pH water, like eight and a half pH through that crumbly brown chalky humate, out comes humic acid. Mm. But it, 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 it responds to the pH that way. Um, but just uh, raising your pH uh, will help uh, get rid of a lot of diseases. Um, but almost all farmers and golf courses use uh, something that uh, will, will keep their soil acidic. Um, golf courses. Usually, if you're going to call on a golf course superintendent, they don't have an hour to sit and talk to you. 10, 15 minutes, here's a sample, here's some literature. Try, try it out on your, your practice screen, like where the golfers go while they're waiting their turn to tee off, you'll have 10 golfers over on this. Looks like a, a mini golf, uh, you know, a, a play, a kid's play golf course, but it's just for putting, but it's getting stomped by the same people every day. And it takes some big hits and it gets compacted and they're not risking the beauty of their whole beautiful golf course, trying this new product. If they try it first on their practice green or where they're growing new sod to, to replace where, divots happen out on the course and um at yale golf we're, we're 17 inches long normally grass only puts out a three and a half inch root maybe four inches um and these days but they had 17 inch roots at all golf course and um that the plant can get to more uh, nutrients and water um, so the, the golf 
course, guys, uh, the superintendent is the contact there, and he has a budget, or she has a budget uh, of a uh, hundred thousand dollars. And then I let them know about that problem. It's a little uncomfortable to mention that their life expectancy is fifty-eight. What you're doing, but let's learn how to get your golf course off of drugs. And um, so it, there, there's a host of things that that we'll do. Um, but one is keep the pH high, uh, decompact yeah. naturally, address weeds, insects, and disease by balancing your soil and using these other nutrients. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's the best thing to do. And maybe 10, 15 minutes. In fact, if I walk up to the, them and I'm holding a five gallon bucket in each hand of my super concentrate, often they'll take both of them. If I walk up with, I learned this because I went up to one golf course and uh, East Hampton golf course. And I had one. He said, dang, I'd buy two if you had two right now. So the next time I had three and I walked up with two, he took them both and said, do you have a third? And I said, actually I do. And he took a third. So how those and guys, so one, those guys put the application down every day, right? The, every day, every, every day, day they cut the greens and every day they cut the greens and teas. Yeah. And if they spray it on there, it's not going to get disease. Yeah. It's not like you have a scrape on your arm that needs some first aid cream on it. And it makes the rest of the golf course look beautiful too. My oldest arborist, uh, Burst Tree Experts on Long Island, Charlie Burst said to me, you know, Glenn, just, you know, this other day, I'm just calling you to tell you this. I, I sprayed it on, I was taking care of the trees at this mansion property and I, you know, out on the grass too and stuff like that. And I stood back and the whole property just was glowing. It had a vibrancy to it that it didn't have when I got there, but uh, yeah. His his father has been buying that product since 1970, and this is the second generation of that company, and he's been working with me. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, they. That's why he gets those big jobs because he does a really good job with good stuff. Yeah. And um, but um, so uh, those are some of the things uh, that happen at golf courses. Plus, you have fishes. You have Fischetti's in Long Island who are well-known yeah. distributors. Uh, Mario, Mar Mario Fischetti Nurseries uh, only sells to contractors. Yeah. If you were just a citizen, you couldn't go in there and buy stuff. And, uh, but they, they, so that helps the contractors. They don't have to stand in line at a retail store waiting their turn to buy whatever. Yeah. So they, they cater to them. And, um, yeah, they take 20 to 40 buckets a year. You know, I is what they'll normally when I went to make a delivery there one time, I was in line to to talk to Paul at the counter. And I was just standing there, a bunch of other guys had just arrived with their orders. And um Paul's like, Oh yeah, you had the feedback, right? So he called me up front and all the guys around me, like all these landscapers. They were like, you sell the feedback? And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, oh my God, oh my God, greatest stuff ever. Thank you so much. And I said, you're welcome. Like yeah. it was very, very impre impressive, really. I mean, these guys are all Long Island contractors. You know, yeah. they're not they're not kidding around. They need their stuff to be beautiful. Yeah. Right. Yes. And it's a great opportunity because how many contract uh, landscapers are there in this country? thousands of them yeah and um so yeah it's a big deal and um 70 percent of uh the people that subscribe to gardening magazines are women and so um it's worth advertising in those types of things or going to garden clubs and talk about your stuff and tell them where they can go buy it locally or send them to a website where they can buy it. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. I'd, I'd like to I, ask... I think the women actually did uh, invented gardening because while dad was out hunting or something like that and mom's home with the kids and can go in the backyard and make a garden and pick food and nurture that and just keep the home steady, and then dad shows up sometime later with, you know, uh, a deer or... Heidi, whatever you're going to eat. Heidi's know? trying to ask you a question, Glenn. 
yes, yeah. yeah. I was speaking of gardening. The average homeowner, um, you know, the average person that has, you know, some lawn and they may garden. I don't think they realize what they're actually putting on their lawns. No. And no, they wouldn't. They and, don't. And the what chemicals they were actually they're using. Just, right. So just because it makes it look pretty for a minute doesn't mean it's healthy. Exactly. So what can't judge a book. Yeah. So what would be the best solution, you know, with the your product? What would work good for a site? Somebody has a couple acres, they mow their lawn on yeah. a regular basis, and they have a little backyard garden, and they're buying yeah. from a local feed store, and it says this will do this and this will do that. And they don't realize that they're putting all, just as much chemicals on their lawn as the golf courses are or their gardens, right. and they don't even realize it. Pretty much all the commercial products that you could go in, in Home Depot or Walmart or all these stores that sell that stuff, uh, almost all the uh, fertilizer is poison. And they also sell those. You walk down the aisle and it's like you could smell it. You're near that aisle just from the smell of the poison in the air. Uh, but it's weeds, insects, and disease, insecticide, uh, herbicide, and pesticide. And generically, they lump them all, and they just call it a pesticide. But uh, Roundup, for example, absolutely. I mean, uh, that causes cancer. But, uh, but what Roundup is, uh, it's a broad spectrum weed killer uh, versus it only gets dandelions. No, it'll kill any plant that it touches. And then you have to wait at least a week before you can plant again, because this stuff is toxic. But the same thing uh, that will do the same thing is strong vinegar. Table vinegar is 15% strength um, of this particular acid. Ascorbic um, acid. As yeah. 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 Um, and so that works on a sunny day within hours and uh, it will kill whatever it touches. Um, but then you can plant the next day and it decomposes really fast and it's not toxic to, I mean, if you drank it, a 15% strength, yes, that is toxic. So you have to be careful with that, but it doesn't have any long-term lasting effects. Um, uh, but so that's one way to use a broad spectrum herbicide. Um, insects, in Florida, for example, 60% of the orange groves, 60% of the citrus industry in Florida is wiped out because of these cooties that come on these bugs that like to land on the leaves and start eating them. And so I didn't even know that until two years ago, and somebody wanted to go after that industry in Florida. And um, the wings of beetles that uh, are made of this stuff called lignin. And there is an enzyme called lignase, which melts it uh, uh, in my formula. And it's literally like the Dorothy throwing water on the Wicked Witch of the West and I'm melting, I'm melting. You know, it has the same effect. And if you sprayed your citrus grove off with feedback liquid compost, it would be toxic to the bugs that are just carrying those cooties, whatever, I forget the name of it. But like ticks, don't get Lyme disease, they just carry it. And a lot of bugs uh, are just carriers of these things. And so uh, that, that's one other thing uh, that feedback could be used for uh, any insect problems. Uh, that would be a good way to discourage them. Uh, in the forest, if you walk through a forest, it's like very healthy, most forests are pretty healthy. But every now and then you see a dead rotting log or that tree over there is dying, which is normal. There's a life cycle to it. Uh, but it's not like the whole forest is in destruction mode and, and dying. Um, why am I going there? So, um, you know, because occasional problems will pop up, but you can regenerate it without wiping uh, with everything feedback out. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
Well, right? the other thing is that I think when you improve the, the health of the soil, then a lot of that stuff doesn't even come. As we know, you know, the plants and the soil are actually sending that signal for the opportunistics to come when they're sick, when it's weak. Right. And they leave all the good ones alone. Yeah. And then the beneficials um, will come when it's healthier. Okay. Yes. Let's, I want to segue here. Out West, a huge life taking problem is forest fires. Yeah. It's a, it is a huge problem out here. Yeah. And one day I was uh, in the early morning uh, at dawn, I was up on Mount Shasta walking through these giant pines and I saw smoke just in s several different places. And an arsonist had come in the night before and uh, let the, lit the forest on fire. Uh, by just like taking um, some toilet tissue and throwing it on the ground. And when I went up to this one by this giant Douglas fir that was like 400 years old, I was like mad trying to like get all the, all the, the burning embers and stuff uh, away. But I realized this is impossible because the duff, that's the unbroken leaves and needles and things was literally two and a half to three feet deep over the whole forest floor. And here I am just trying to deal with this one hole and it was out of hand. So I ran back to camp and one of my daughters came back with me to put it out. And the other daughter and her boyfriend went to go get the fire people. And out of, uh, uh, you know, maybe 12 forest fire, forest fighters, forest firefighters showed up. Like 10 of them were women, forest wow. you know, uh, firefighters, right? And uh, we discovered that uh, this arsonist had gone to four different places and we found some burned tissue that didn't go anywhere. But so um, how to prevent forest fire? The answer is not to rake the forest and get rid of, you know, like the answer is to compost it in place. If you sprayed the forest floor off twice a month, year round for two or three years, that would turn uh, into compost. And it would be the difference between coleslaw and sauerkraut. It's the same stuff, but it changes once it's permanent, it breaks down. You mean spray it with feedback? And, or, or your backyard compost tea. I'd be uh, happy to sell you yep. feedback or compost, but anything that will accelerate that yep. um, um, uh, would, would break that down. And I've been, haven't been silent about that message and I haven't gotten, I haven't gotten to the right ears yet with mm -hmm. that. And, um, but I know that's the answer. Um, it, it's an inch a year or inch every five, no, a, an inch a million years per million years is what happens in nature. Mm -hmm. But because the conditions are really dry out here and different things, and this is younger than the East coast, the Appalachian Mountains used to be higher than the Himalayas. Mm. And all this stuff has been broken down for millions of years. And that's why the soil holds water because there's is enough organic matter in the soil. Where here is, it runs off and causes flooding. And so I know that's the answer. And so I've been, I've had a few conversations in the past week with people that may act on that. I'd be happy to sell them the stuff if they didn't have enough of their own. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, see. we'll see how that's going. Um, so, so one of the enzymes um, in the feedback is actually used in forest fighting, firefighting, right? No, they don't do it at all yet. No, I thought you said there's one enzyme that they do when they put the water in the helicopters and spray the forest. There's an enzyme for no. That's what I. That's what I want them to do. They, they spray this red stuff, oh. so you get, so it will smother the fire, and from the, even high in the air, you, they can say, "Oh, we already did that spot. Let's go do it over here." So they are doing air spraying, gotcha. and if you know, a lot of times you'll see I see crop spraying over cotton or whatever crop they have, and an airplane flies just a few feet above the crop and sprays. They could do it like that. Or you can get a gang of Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts to line up and everybody takes some and you walk through and just sprinkle the forest um, or use drones or however you would disperse it. It would still be cheaper 
um, and easier to, uh, instead of having all these people climb up and down mountains and all this stuff, just fly over it and spray it a couple times a month. Uh, I, I, I really believe that's the answer. Yeah, I love that. I really do. And I've just yeah, seen, I've so, just seen how, um, just taking care of properties, you know, the last couple of farms that we've been on and only using feedback and understand, just realizing that it already created its own perimeter. Like you could tell where I was using it as opposed to like where it ended and where it began. You know, it was really interesting how, like, I could yeah. tell all the soil wanted it, but you couldn't, you know, I was only taking care yes. of one particular area, but yeah, it, it's amazing. I, I always tell people like, like you say, use um, feedback first on your plants or soil that's the sickest so that they can experience the Lazarus effect on the plant. So they can see how powerful yeah. it will Ooh, help restore the life. One. Yeah. The Lazarus effect. I like that one. Yeah. Wow. Good one. Well, I got that for me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I haven't, I haven't heard that one in a while. Good, good, uh, uh, good way. Yeah. The whole thing is to restore the soil. Yeah. And so, um, the diversity in enzymes and minerals and organic matter comes with feedback. The ability to open up the soil gives you the air part and you're putting it down with water. Oh, how often can you use it is what people ask me a lot. Yep. And I say, and I say um, every time you water, actually. You can't fertilize every time you water. You're only going to do that half a dozen times maybe during a season. Yeah. Uh, but uh, every time you water, and so it depends what the motivation is. The cannabis growers here want to have the, the most, the best, um, and so they will use it every time they water. Most landscapers that have, you know, 50 customers, they'll go out on their property just four times a year to do something, mm -hmm. or maybe six times with my stuff, um, but uh, they could use it every time. You know, they, they would like more excuses to get on the person's property yeah. and make more money. But uh, what else can we do? Well, we, we can feed the soil and plants now. And uh, that's what we can do. Okay. And, and, you know, people that can afford to have landscapers, that's what they do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. They're not threatened by that. And the, and the gardens are just phenomenal. Like the colors of the plant, the flowers and the health, it's just amazing. Just amazing. Not yeah. to mention, not to mention how really quickly the soil restores, like the worms, you know, the the beneficials that start arriving almost right away. I always I always think it's gonna take a good year or two, but honestly, within the first season, I see all of those seven markers of a healthy garden. You know, it's cool. They all come. Yep. That, I'm not saying I won't find soil that's bad that won't heal that fast, but I've mostly everything I've ever done heals that quickly, or 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 has it has enough health in it that the beneficials start coming to help keep the garden healthy. Yeah, and so that's that's the whole thing. You know, um, uh, the people that are taking care of plants and the ground, whether it's farming or golf or gardens or just your house plants, even. They want something that's safe and easy to use. Um, the poison fertilizers that all the big farmers and places use um, leaves behind salt, which literally kills yeah. soil microbes. Yeah. They put it down and it's water soluble and it will run away. My stuff will run deep. Yeah. It doesn't run off the surface yeah. and uh, the poisons also lower the pH of the soil. Yeah. Setting so it up for it's more like chemicals. The yeah. It's right. It's a chemical fertilizer. It's setting you so, up to um, need more of them. Right. So like one of the things, uh, you know, I don't produce a fertilizer today. Um, so also if you, your customers want, uh, organic fertilizer, Pam, I would recommend uh, there are other things like blood meal is How a really good like one. like horse manure and cow manure? Or, <laughs> and also fish. Yeah, I don't know. Fish for, they're very good. They're just high in carbon. 
but they're but they're good they're real good i mean my gardens are beautiful always you know i just make yeah. sure that it's super com composted because it um the high carbon in it you know but it it breaks down it, you know within six months we have a, a a method for breaking down manure that you could do it within just a few weeks with uh blowing aerating the soil i mean the the manure but I haven't set that up. But with yeah, with the solar panel, you can set up blowing air into what we would do is set up the big um like the big windrows that that you see on farms. We put a big pipe in the middle of that, pile the manure on top of it, the raw manure, and then set you can you can set this so that it's um with a computer, you know um. I guess it's pretty easy to set this up, but you can set a timer so that every hour for one minute twice twice an hour so it's literally right. two minutes you're blowing air into the the tube or the or the pipe and they can right. be as long as you want and we only have to use um a, a small little motor the size of a bouncy house motor like it's not very big but it's powered by the solar panels and so you set it nice. for, for you set it two times in two times an hour for a minute within three weeks, it's completely broken down. And, you know, in right. some ways it's not as good as you and I would like it because it also does pasteurize it. I mean, it heats it really high, but it does make it marketable for bigger chains and things like that because then there's no pathogens in it at all. Um, right. But that's also, it, the temperature gets high enough to kill the weed seeds and everything. I mean, it's, it's pretty good to do that if you're trying to maintain depends on what you're, what you're growing yeah i would prefer mm -hmm. to, i would prefer to have it raw or not not composted or aerated that way but there are lots of gardens and people that want it that way you know especially yes especially uh nurseries and, yes uh corn gluten meal yeah is another good safe source of nitrogen uh, a fish, uh, fish like a, a fish a smoothie basically fish. is a fish. Yeah, yes. fish and feedback. That's like one of the best combinations you could have because you, yes. you know, feedback helps the fertilizer be used 100% nearly and it's so easy for it to use the fish fertilizer. Right. Some of the enzymes that are in feedback liquid compost are protease, which eats uh, proteins, yeah, like plant proteins, or if there's dead mice in the field yeah. or dead deer or something, yeah, it will break down that protein. Um, there's uh, cellulase, which eats cellulose. Yeah. Um, uh, there is uh, lignase, which eats lignans, which is like a, if you looked at a celery, those big long stringy things. Yeah. It will break those down. Yeah. It will break down last year's chemicals. That the farmer might have put down um, through uh, uh, lignase. Yeah. Uh, breaks down greases, oils, and fats. That's why it worked on that oil, uh, that fuel oil spill. Yep. Yep. Uh, Which I because had. There's, yep. like, there's, lig there's lignase. I mean, there is a, yeah, um, lipase. Yep. Which breaks down lignase. Yeah. Um, and there is um, another one that eats uh, starches and sugars and, um, That's you know, like. leftover. Um, yeah, I'm going to have a, I'm going to do this another time, but I'll have those things written down so I don't have a senior moment and just forget the name of that other thing. The cellulase, right? Uh, cellulase breaks down cellulose. Amylase. Uh, will break down the starches. Okay. And light and light paste will break down uh, the lipids. And in science, fats and greases and oils are called lipids. Yeah. And so, uh, or or things made from them. So. So uh, that's a secret recipe, also. And um, uh, I don't know all of the things. And after working with feedback for many years, I said, hey, I observed this thing happen. And so it must have lignase in it. And they said, yes, it does. Yeah. So, so they've admit, they have admitted to me about half a dozen or so. Oh my God, Glenn. So 
Can you just explain the CEC on the a cation exchange capacity on a, on a soil test? Because I know a lot of people have their soil test, but they don't understand what is a healthy number on there and what why why that's important on your soil test. Sure. What would be healthy is to see a CEC of 12 to 18. Yep. You could say, woohoo, I'm doing something right. Um, uh, but most People's yards in suburbia have a CEC of like four or six or something like that. Uh -huh. And it is it has to do with how much organic matter is in the soil that can hold water. Mm. If it's not enough, the water is just going to run off, especially if the soil is compacted. But if you open the soil up, a lot of it will go deeper into this area where there are Still is no organic matter, but it's feeding the microbes and the microbes are going to live and die and their dead bodies stack up yep. and convert things in the soil. And that's how they, they build that up there. Plus, um, uh, feedback uh, or the humic acid is 68% organic matter. It's like, uh, it's finer than espresso coffee. I mean, it's like, it's microscopic. Yeah. Um, but that is a significant part. And then it's got uh, uh, the enzyme mixture that's helping it get deep in the soil. So with the cation exchange uh, capacity, we're talking about positive and negative charges on the, on the elements. Can you explain that? Yes. On a periodic table of the elements, yeah. all of those symbols have a plus sign or a minus sign. The yeah. pluses are cations. C A T I O N S cations is a plus. Yeah. The minus ones are, are A N I O N S anions. Mm. Yeah. And there are some anions that a plant also eats. Um, but why this is a big deal uh, is because I, I might be repeating myself. The whole crust of Mother Earth, 50 miles deep, has a negative charge from the surface to 50 miles in. And so magnets, negative, wants to hold on to a positive, yeah. right? And yeah. so if the earth is a negative magnet, it wants to hold a positive thing, and plants eat about 17 positive things. Yeah, they say. There's more, though, right? Uh, I, I mean, believe so. Yeah. When I first started doing what I do, uh, I think scientists, even like in the 80s and 90s, were saying there's only 13 uh -huh. or 14 elements that plants eat. But now it's up to 17. And so we know this, and yet when you go to a store, any store to buy fertilizer, there's only three numbers on it, yeah. nine times out of 10. Yeah. Uh, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, NPK. Yeah. Phosph uh, nitrogen makes new things grow up in leaves and branches and more growth. Um, uh, that's N, nitrogen. Uh, phosphorus. The one in the middle uh, is about root development. And then at flowering time, at least in the cannabis industry, that's when they add it uh, back in again because it enhances flowering. And uh, potassium is all about all around plant health care. Um, uh, Mark, coach at the Nature Lyceum, used to say it stands for up, down, all around. Mm. And so all these landscapers got that science that is oh up down all around okay what else do we want well you want to how about boron yeah how about manganese yeah. how about sulfur how about calcium how about all of these other elements that yeah. you need to grow big and strong yeah and so that's what feedback does it's like taking you can you couldn't eat a big a feast size meal every day mm -hmm. uh, but you could take a vitamin every day mm -hmm. And the big feast size meal is the fertilizer part, and you do that a few times during the season. Mm -hmm. um, but you, every time you water, you could uh, uh, put on feedback. Yeah. The weed growers are trying to get the most, the biggest, the best. Yeah. And so that's why they'll do it every time they water. Yeah. The people that are growing corn in Nebraska or Kansas or wherever, they do the bare minimum and let nature water it mostly. Some of the fields are irrigated but it's not the same. Um, mm -hmm. Hay, in particular, mm -hmm. sucks minerals out of the soil. Mm -hmm. And so after 100 years of doing growing whatever you're growing there, 
and there's no more minerals in the soil, it just simply is put them back. Yeah. Put them back in micro form, like through feedback, and you could have a slow release mineral like paramagnetic mineral rock dust yep. or mineral uh, granules. Uh, and that's a slow release. If you, Most of the landscapers that I've worked with like the granular, granules better than the dust yeah. only because they take up space in the soil, which allows for more porosity and less compaction. And it's still breaking down. Yeah. And it's a, just a little bit slower. I like that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I like that too. I like, it depends. Like we've been using, we used, in the fall, we put down some dolomitic pelletized um, uh, um, mm -hmm. lot, uh, lot, dolomite. Dolomite, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's magnesium and calcium. Yep. Uh, so uh, CEC, like if you've got your soil test back and it says CEC six or four or something, you, you know you're in a position to do better. Yeah. 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 You, you you can't overdo it. Um, so you just keep some more keep applying until until you repair that, you restore that. Yeah. And that would be the fertility, right? That would get restored in the process. Yes. Um, and the fertility is uh, the ability to procreate. Uh, to procreate because yeah. there's water. There's all the vitamins. Yeah. There's all of those things yeah. that enhances. And and if there's health. That keeps the bacteria and the cooties away. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, too bad we couldn't use it on COVID. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, help, what we need is a healthy soil, healthy soil, healthy bodies. Yeah. So, um, I right. Know, and my right. horses, my horses, by the way, and probably all the animals would say, yeah, I would use, they, 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 they crave it. I told you that there you go. they broke into my that tank. Heidi, we have a tank that we pull for the horses to spray the fields with. Yeah. And we left it in with them last year and they literally broke into the side of it and drank most of the tank. <laughs> oh my goodness. We weren't sure what they were doing. They were um they were circled all around the um are you okay? They circled yeah. all around the the tank. I'm, I'm safe. Yeah, I know you're safe. <laughs> um, so they circled all around the tank. So we just thought they were maybe taking a nap. We weren't even sure. And when we went over there, they had it was definitely punch. Ate a hole in the side of it. Definitely punch. And um, they drank it all. Almost drank it down to as far as they could get their big fat heads in that tank. Wow. wow. Yeah, so, I think their colors. Yeah, they, that next day, Mario, we have pictures of Mario, all of them actually. The color yeah. that they had after that, like uh, he was so black. That I, we've never seen Mario that black, and he's got like wow. really, all of them. Anybody, the colors just were accentuated in such an amazing way. The pigment in their hair. Oh, uh, let me let me go somewhere with this for a minute. Yeah. I was talking about making humic acid out of humate yeah. by pouring the high pH water through. Yeah. And humic acid is the same color as feedback. It's this dark brown. Yep. But the, even the humic acid, you could split one more time because in it is the brown part and this other part that's bright gold. Yep. And if you've ever, and that's full the Vic full acid. Vic. Full Vic, yep. If you, if you ever, uh, had liquid vitamins from a health food store. That's what it is. It's this ancient compost fulvic acid. It's just doing that last separation. And is it that and when you're talking is it different plants use di the, either the can take up the fulvic or the humic? What's the difference? No, the fulvic is the part that has the vitamins. And the fulvic oh, is the part okay. that has the has the uh, really high uh, electrical charge, I've heard. Okay. Although I'm not convinced that it, it's that part. But um, most people just, you know, feedback uh, and humic acid has both. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's just the idea to sell another product yeah. that people also sell I the fulvic acid. I've seen it marketed like that. And I think the fulvic is more expensive for sure. Uh, um, yeah. So um, 
So yeah, yeah. I think we really covered um, a lot here. So I think it would be a good time to wrap things up. So is there anything you want to um, say in closing? Yes, Heidi, I would like to encourage you uh, or and Pam, like if there is uh, anything you think of, oh, we didn't talk about this or what yeah. about that? Yeah. Write questions down. And the next time we do this, it could be like you see on TV, the talk show host talking to the person, <laughs> what, what about this? And blah, 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 more. Uh -huh, that yeah. it was kind of just free, free, free throw today. Yeah, free throw, but it was absolutely it was because I could think of Thanks. going into the why we need it so much, you know, yeah. going into why and how much restoring the soil can help everybody, the planet, humans, and everything. So that that's on my thought for the next time. Yeah. You know, do you know, I have to say this as part of this, um, you know, Greta Thunberg, who did that uh, global climate awareness thing and sit-ins around the world about it. Yeah. Well, so, it, okay. So we're talking about there's excess carbon dioxide up in the atmosphere and trees, for example, they breathe in a ton of carbon dioxide every day. And with that, they grow new leaves and they grow wider trees and more bark. And that's, uh, but then at night, they exhale back half of what they took in during the day. Yeah. And so the, the idea is if we wanted to clean the skies, yes, we have to stop polluting, but we need to plant more trees and yeah. other plants that suck in all that's this. Right. And right. one of the, the one tr in, tree in particular, sucks in more than almost every other plant and it's the sugar maple really it uses an it uses an enzyme called rubisco and the plants that use rubisco uh use more co2 and so i would like to do uh drone planting of uh, uh -huh. of uh of sugar maples and then you'd create firewood you'd create jobs you'd create sugar you'd heal the air more I mean, that's just a thing. That's just a little rant. Um, also, um, by three to 